Good day, Lincoln Park Forensic Science. All right, this is a demonstration lab for Lab 4A, examination of the hair cuticle. Um, so you can see there are some uh, materials listed, there's a procedure, um, but all of this will be done for you in a remote setting. Um, so the procedure is um, laid out here for you um, to review. However, uh, you won't be responsible for um, completing the actual lab. At home, unless it is something you're really interested in, it is something that you could replicate. Um, we use uh, just clear nail polish uh, and microscope slides. However, you could use any uh, smooth surface uh, to examine. You wouldn't necessarily need a microscope slide. You could use some kind of uh, plate um, uh, or even a glass. Uh, and uh, just as long as you cleaned it up and you didn't get me in trouble with the adults in your house, that would be totally acceptable. So um, to actually do this procedure, you can follow these instructions uh, as laid out, or you can please just uh, observe the lab as I demonstrate it today. All right, so uh, we're going to start off. Uh, so this is the examination of hair cuticle which is the outermost layer of hair. So we're going to use a clean surface and a clean microscope slide, which we're going to label. And we'll be testing my hair and my dog, Snoopy. So we'll just label this brown John and I'm human. All right, so we're going to examine the cuticle um, as a patent expression. Uh, so that means that uh, we're not going to examine the actual hair, but rather the impression it leaves behind, like a footprint in the sand. So in order to obtain this impression, I'm going to take a single clear layer of nail polish, so clear nail polish, a thin layer, and a sample of hair. of hair from my latest hair type haircut. I'll be working to the side of the camera here. Hopefully you can see this well. All right. So I've obtained a single hair and I'm just going to lay the hair down in the nail polish. Carefully not to wiggle it around too much. I'm just going to lay the hair into the clear nail polish and uh, it will dry and form an impression. So we're going to let it dry for about 10 minutes. I'm just going to set this aside and I will prepare another slide for the canine, the term for dogs, right? So brown, Snoopy, and he's canine. All right, so I'll prepare another slide canine hair. Got a thin layer. I think I used a little too much before. Very thin layer. Clear nail polish. And then a hair sample. Generally, we'd remark on the overall characteristics of the hair. My hair is relatively thick, brown, wavy, with gray because of aging. My dog's hair is also uh, is kind of thinner, um, but also wavy. Uh, and it is three colors, black, brown, and white. But we'll talk more about that and the characteristics of hair. So again, I'm just going to lay down hair shaft and clear nail polish to dry. Alright, we'll set that aside. Alright, just like on the cooking shows, we have some prepared samples. So here is my a sample of my hair, human hair, and you can see the nail polish is dried. So I'm just going to remove that hair and let's see how well this picks this up. But you can see that, hopefully you can see that, oh I know, sorry guys, I'm using oblique lighting, so at a low angle, the light is held, and you can see that line 
in the very center of the nail polish impression um, or the nail polish, uh, dried nail polish, there's an impression left, like a footprint in the sand, right? Let's look at the sample from the dog hair. So we remove the hair. Okay. And it leaves behind. Oh, we can see that there. It leaves behind that line, that impression, right? So we're looking at now. We're looking at it macroscopically with the naked eye. We're magnifying with low power here. But to really view the impression of the hair, we have to look at it under the microscope. So those, those will be the slides included in this uh, lab exercise.